Glass is an incredibly versatile material that has been used for centuries for everything from windows and bottles to eyeglasses and cookware. But how is glass made? In this video, we'll take a journey from the sandy beaches to the fiery furnaces of glass factories to uncover the secrets of glass making. Okay, so the making of glass all starts with a surprisingly simple mix of ingredients, sand, soda ash, and limestone. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, sand? Which is a seemingly ordinary ingredient found abundantly in nature. However, not just any sand will do. High-quality glass starts with silica sand, mostly made up of silicone dioxide, SiO2, which undergoes a meticulous selection process to ensure purity. Then other ingredients like soda ash, Na2CO3, and limestone, CaCO3, are added to lower the melting temperature of the sand and make the glass more workable. Other additives such as alumina and magnesia may join the mix to enhance specific properties of the glass. The heart of the glassmaking process lies in the furnace, a blazing cauldron where the raw materials undergo a mesmerizing transformation. This is where the alchemy begins. So the first step in making glass is to melt the ingredients together in this furnace. The silica sand, along with other key ingredients like soda ash and limestone, dances in the intense heat. The furnace is heated to around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt the sand, soda ash, and limestone into a molten liquid. Here, you have a molten pool of potential awaiting the touch of skilled artisans. Once the ingredients are melted, the glass is formed into different shapes using a variety of techniques. Here's where the artisans get to weave their magic. The artisan's skill comes to the forefront as they manipulate the material, coaxing it into the desired form. Gathering on the end of a blowpipe or in a ladle, the liquid glass is delicately shaped and molded. One common technique is called glass blowing. Glass blowing is a timeless technique that has been used for many centuries to create glass. In glass blowing, a glass blower uses a blowpipe to gather molten glass from the furnace and then blows it into the pipe to form bubbles or shapes. With a breath, they can inflate the glass like a delicate balloon and as it expands, shape it with tools to create various forms. The process requires a rhythmic dance around the furnace to maintain even heat distribution. Another common technique for making glass is called float glass making. In float glass making, molten glass is poured onto a bed of molten tin. The molten glass floats on the tin and spreads out into a flat sheet. This process is used to make flat glass such as the glass used in windows and windshields. Whether it's the elegant curves of a vase or the precision of a drinking glass, the shaping process is a ballet of craftsmanship. After all the shaping and coloring, our glass needs to cool down. We can't just take it out of the oven and use it right away. That would be like trying to eat a hot pizza straight from the oven. It needs a bit of time to cool off and settle into its final form. So after molding the glass into the desired form, the next step is the cooling and annealing process. Annealing is a process of slowly cooling the glass to prevent it from cracking or breaking. The glass is heated to around 1200 degrees Fahrenheit and then slowly cooled over a period of several hours. This crucial step in the process grants the glass both durability and resilience, allowing it to relax and settle into its final form. Beyond basic forms, glassmaking allows for artistic expression. Have you ever touched a piece of glass and thought, wow, this is really smooth? That's because they use special tools to cut and polish the glass. Various decorative techniques like etching, engraving, and cutting add layers of complexity and beauty to the finished product. Adding color through fritting or molten glass threads enhances visual appeal. Glass painting offers a canvas for artistic expression. The addition of color through techniques like fritting or the application of molten glass threads further elevates the visual allure of the final piece. Now, not all glass serves merely as a vessel or decorative piece. Some take on the role of windows, lenses, or intricate glassware. Achieving the desired clarity and precision involves cutting and polishing. After annealing, the glass may be polished or treated with other finishes to give it the desired appearance and properties. For example, glass can be coated with a thin layer of metal to make it reflective, 
or with a chemical coating to make it resistant to scratches. Diamond tip tools, water, and abrasive materials are employed to refine the surface, turning a piece of glass into a crystal clear masterpiece. Glass, as delicate as it may seem, can be toughened to withstand the trials of everyday use. To achieve this level of toughness, the glass is put through a process called tempering, which involves heating the glass to high temperatures and then rapidly cooling it. This process creates a balance of internal stresses, enhancing the strength and resilience of the glass. The process of making glass doesn't end with traditional methods. There are cool new and much easier ways to make it. Technological advancements have propelled the art of glassmaking into the future. Float glass, invented in the mid-20th century, revolutionized the industry by producing large, flat sheets of glass with exceptional clarity. We also now have innovations like Gorilla Glass, finding their place in modern devices, combining strength and thinness for sleek, durable screens. No discussion on modern manufacturing is complete without addressing environmental concerns. The glass industry has not turned a blind eye to sustainability. Efforts to recycle and reduce energy consumption are reshaping the landscape of glassmaking. From recycled glass content to energy-efficient furnaces, the industry is embracing greener practices to ensure that the beauty of glass doesn't come at the cost of our planet.